In this video, we are going to do math. Specifically, we are going to do a type of math called topology. And I'm going to give you a five minute course in topology. Now you might be asking what topology is, and it turns out to be really simple. Topology is just the study of how topological spaces and their properties are preserved under homeomorphisms. If you'd like to learn more, you can buy the companion textbook that I wrote for this course, which is available at all major academic bookstores. Here on this slide, you can see a bunch of topological pictures, including a knot, a Mobius strip, and a coffee mug turning into a donut. These images make topology look way more fun and interesting than it actually is. I will not be referring to these images again at any point during the course. Now before we begin the course, I think it's very important to establish why we would want to study topology and what the point of all this is. Well, as we all know, topological spaces are transformed using continuous maps. And of course, continuous maps are arrows in the category of topological spaces. And we know that we need arrows to understand functors. And of course, we need functors to understand natural transformations. And we need natural transformations in order to understand adjoint functors. So as you can see, topology has a number of practical applications. Now that we're properly motivated, let's begin the course. Definition 1.1. A topology T on X is a family of sets in X such that the empty set is in T and X is in T, the possibly infinite union of any sets in T is in T, and the finite intersection of any sets in T is in T. Theorem 1.2. A subset Q of the real numbers is open in the Euclidean topology if and only if it is a union of open intervals and we can see the definition of the Euclidean topology here. Proof. For the proof, see exercise 1.3. Exercise 1.3. Prove theorem 1.2. Definition 1.4. Let x be a set with a topology t. A subset p of x is closed if its complement, x minus p, also written p superscript c, is open in t. Definition 1.5. The closure p-bar of a set p is the union of p and all its limit points, where a limit point of a set j is a point y, where every neighborhood of y contains a point in j different than y itself. Theorem 1.6. The closure of a set is closed. Proof. For this proof, we'll denote open sets by the letter c. We'll denote ordinary sets by the letter p. And we'll denote points by the Greek letter capital Rho. Suppose that rho is not in p-bar. Then there exists a c-rho such that rho is in c-rho, and c-rho intersect p is the empty set. Clearly, p-bar c is the union of sets c-rho such that rho is in p-bar c. Since the union of open sets is an open set, this must mean that p-bar c is open. Therefore, p-bar is closed. This completes the proof. If you find this proof confusing, please look at this easy-to-understand diagram. Definition 1.7, compactness. Now I'd like to emphasize that this definition is very, very important. I would even say that if you don't understand compactness, then you don't understand topology. The topological space X is compact if every open cover has a finite subcover. So please make sure you understand this definition. Theorem 1.8, the heine borel theorem. The heine borel theorem states that every closed bounded subset of Rn is compact. Proof. Start by taking a closed bounded subset P in Rn. The fact that P is compact follows trivially from the fact that P is closed and bounded. This completes the proof. Theorem 1.9, the Poincaré conjecture. The Poincaré conjecture states that every simply connected closed 3-manifold is homeomorphic to the 3-sphere. Proof. This proof is left as an exercise to the viewer. Alright, so Theorem 1.9 is a fun little problem that you can try and tackle on your evenings and weekends. Alright, that's it, and this completes my online course on topology. Congratulations for finishing it. Now, those of you who are in a topology class right now in school might have some additional questions. You might be asking yourself why you're paying thousands of dollars to study things like open and closed sets that have no social value and contribute nothing to society. This is a very important question, and it's a question you'll be asking yourself every day when you go to a magical place called graduate school.